Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. We are back with another Forgotten Items thrift flip video. As I've shown you guys last time, I got stuff everywhere that is random. We have those, we have birds, and then on this table, I have a candlestick, a Kleenex holder, and then there's Forgotten Items over here. And then we still have the ones from last week sitting here. So let's see what we could get accomplished today and let's get started. Start off with these forgotten frames. I did not film it, but I sprayed the mirrors with clear matte by Rust-Oleum and then adhered my resin pieces with a tight bond. Now we're going to take mint chip and blue iris. Blue iris is not a color we all use very often, but y'all it is stunning. I'm going to take each color and I am going to mix it with a little bit of salt wash. I don't need a ton of texture, but I did not want the paint job to be flat. I definitely wanted to give it dimension. So always remember with salt wash, you can add more. So start off with a little bit and then work your way up. So usually I stipple this on, but for the frame, I wanted it to look like painted chippy paint. So I did brush strokes on the outer frames. And then as I go in towards the mirror, I'm going to start stippling because I want a different texture. And I also want to ensure that I'm able to get underneath those resin pieces if there's like any kind of gap. And I want to ensure that I have texture on those mirrors so that there's no like flaking or scratching that happens. We're going to do the same thing for this blue iris. Y'all, isn't this color stunning? It is so pretty and it screams summer. All of my paint products are available on my website, unicorndustdesigns.com, and that link is in my description box. All right, so after, or I should say, when it's almost dry, I'm getting this little scraper tool, and I am scraping off some of that salt wash so it looks like natural um, wear on the frames. I do the same thing for the Florida Lease one as well. Now with this one, we're gonna go in with old and gray barnwood patina. Our liquid patinas can be used for decoupage mediums, top coats, and glazes, in this, and stains. So in this case, I am using it as a glaze. I wanted this gray to settle into all of that salt wash texture without using waxes. So I wanted to give it more dimension, but I didn't want to use a wax on this one. So I blot off the excess and I do this in sections because it dries very fast. Now you can see a closer look on the inside, how that patina is kind of grasping onto that salt wash and really bringing out the details. Now I'm taking alchemy wax and I think I took it in iron. I started applying it, but like it was just lackluster. It wasn't doing anything for me. So of course I grabbed my beautiful gold wax and I am going to wipe this on. But then I still thought it was too plain because y'all know I'm extra. So then I got a brush and I outlined the outer frame with my gold wax. And then I ended up going on the inside as well. For me, y'all paint is just paint unless you add your own touch to it and details. This was my way of putting my fingerprint on it and making it beautiful. So for the mint chip one, I'm going straight in with white wax. I'm focusing a lot of that white wax on that silhouette, and then I'm going to work my way out onto the entire piece. Usually I would put clear wax on first, but I do not want a lot of that white wax to be wiped back. I want that white wax on there. So I just put the white wax, then I'm going to blot it off. And I actually kept a lot of the white wax on the inside part around the silhouette, just so it kind of popped a little bit more. Now I'm taking, I think this is white gold alchemy wax, and I am going to dust that on the outer edges of the frame. 
and then you will see right when I start putting it on the silhouette how much those details come back to life and I, I love using waxes on detailed pieces. They are so beautiful. And this one, I just got my finger and kind of wiped it around the edges. But these forgotten mirrors are not forgotten anymore and they are absolutely stunning. Check these out. How cute are these? And they actually have hangers on the back. They were definitely vintage mirrors and they have hangers on the back already so that is awesome somebody could also use these in a tiered tray a bookshelf a desk doesn't matter i love the way they turned out comment down below if you love how these turned out look at how cute those are now my okay, friends when i say forgotten, forgotten stuff i mean like forgotten I mean, stuff. Forgotten yeah, items. I started that on a Facebook that'll, Live that'll, that'll I, get clean, two, but, um, three weeks yeah, ago, put live. some salt wash on there, and, and I guess that's where it ended it. up. But today we're going to finish it. So I applied some resin mushrooms, and then I used Fancy Farm Girl and salt wash to create the texture. Now all those open spaces that are on here, I'm going to take my pennies from heaven which is a copper patina and i am going to put that on anywhere that i see the natural wood or the white in the mushrooms i am not too picky i don't need all that natural wood to be covered it's fine if it pokes out i'm going to do this all the way around the box because the rest of the box you can see on the side looks the same way after i am done applying the liquid patina over the the raw wood we're going to move on to a next step and a reminder this copper patina can be used as a top coat as a stain like there's so many possibilities okay so once that dries i am going to coat it with big top that is hank the reason i'm doing this is because i want to put dark and decrepit liquid patina on it next and I wanna easily be able to wipe it back. I do not want it to melt into that clay-based paint because then I'm not gonna get off what I need. So we're, sorry you guys, I'm right by the window. So after we apply the big top, I'm gonna to go in with dark and decrepit. Again, this is another liquid patina and this will be back in stock, I hope, by the time you're watching this video. So remember, start in small sections with liquid patina because it dries fairly fast. And then I'm just taking a paper towel and wiping it back. You can see right away how that liquid patina dropped into all of that salt wash. It darkened up our copper and it looks gorgeous. I'm gonna do the same thing for the front and I'm gonna make sure that I push into our mushrooms like on the sides of it because I want that dark and decrepit to settle in to those um, pieces so that they really pop when I wipe it back. And this just makes it look a little bit more weathered and not like, oh my gosh, that's bright copper, <laughs> you know? So I love that decrepit little look on it. It's absolutely gorgeous, you guys. If you haven't tried this, again, they can be used as glazes, which is amazing for your stash. Now, I like a finished piece and I think a lot of you do too. So take the extra time and we are going to make this all look cohesive. So I'm taking that dark and decrepit and now I'm using it as a stain. So it is a finished piece and look at how gorgeous this little planter box turned out. Now you can't use it outside, but it is going to make for a beautiful inside decor and you could use it for so many more things than a planter. So comment down below with a mushroom if you are digging this style and that pennies from heaven. So this is just going to be an easy one. You guys know I've shown you before. I love to collect signs, especially now that I'm keeping my booth really nice signs like this. If I get them for a dollar at a garage sale, I can mark them up to $9.95 and that is a great profit and it's cheaper than they're going to find in a store. So I'm going to take these new IOD stamps. I got these from Bonda at PaintedHeirloom.com. Her link is in the description box. We are going to find a trim that fits our frame. Now this is a nice easy way of taking a simple hobby lobby frame and making it special and different so i start on the edge and what is so nice about the new iod like i don't think it's called trimmings but the trim stamps is that they all connect together so there aren't any 
weird connection issues, you know, that you might find sometimes, they all have a connection point. I love the detail that this adds to this sign. It is so beautiful. And this was so easy to do, especially because this was like wood. So it like didn't slide around or move on me, but it was a great way of making this different and putting my own touch on the signs. Now for this next sign, I'm going to use my stamp and then I'm going to apply white paint to it. I think this is white swan. And I'm gonna start, now this one was a little harder because the sign was like slick. So putting that paint on there, it kind of wanted to slide a little bit. So I did the best I could. I still think it was a great added touch to this sign to make it different. And I love it. Now, whenever you're putting paint on your stamps, I like to just take mine to a sink and wash them out because that paint settles into all the little details um, in the stamp. So I recommend doing that. Then on the um, outer frame, I'm going to clear this with the DIY clear wax because it's still paint, it's still ink, you need to seal those. Now with this sign, you guys, I decided to go over the entire front with clear wax. It was kind of scratchy, um, looked a little worn, and this just brought it back to life. It brightened it back up, the scratches disappeared, and I think they turned out pretty darn good. So check out the detail in these. Don't you think it adds just, just that little bit, you know, that needed? They were beautiful on their own, yes, but now this isn't a mass-produced Hobby Lobby sign. This is something I put my own touch on. It has that added little extra detail, and now somebody could bring it into their home and love it again. So we definitely made these work for forgotten items. This DIY isn't gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but y'all, I am absolutely obsessed with it. I took this resin piggy that I made, and I'm gonna take this beautiful napkin. I laid it over my piece so I could see what part of the napkin I wanted to use. I'm gonna cut just one of the squares off and then kind of play around with it. I did try the Roy Cycle decoupage paper, but it was too thick and wouldn't form to it. I probably should have spritzed it with water first, but I was too far in, but I was able to peel it off. Now I'm using the napkin. So I'm gonna peel the back off of the napkin. This is gonna make my napkin thinner and it's going to form more easily to our pig. So I'm taking my liquid patina in clear and this is a great, great decoupage medium. I'm gonna lay that napkin over the top and I'm gonna push it down with my paintbrush while it's still wet. And you can see how I'm able to push down on the outer part of this piggy and start seeing its little figure come to life. I'm pushing down in between the legs and then I am going to let this dry. I do use my heat gun on this just to speed up the process. And then I'm gonna take my finger sander and I'm going to sand in downward motions to get that excess paper off. And there was a little part on the nose, I just ended up putting a little piece of the napkin on there. Now, with the feet, all I did was cut the excess paper off, and then with my brush, I went up in between the legs and pushed it behind the resin mold. So now you can see the full piggy image. Now I'm gonna take this frame. Y'all, this thing weighs two and a half pounds. Yes, I weighed it. It is so heavy. I've had it in my stash for two years and we are finally using it. So I'm gonna take Bohemian Blue to start off with a chippy brush. And I am going to stipple this around the outer frame. I'm not covering the entire frame. So I'm gonna get those edges and go in. And y'all, I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching my videos and sticking around to these parts. So I wanted to gift one of my subscribers one of the eight ounce sample sizes of Bohemian Blue. You need to be 18 and older, older, a US resident, and then you need to comment on this video and my last two videos to enter. So if you want it, um, and then I will put the, uh, 
the gift details down in the description box on when I'm going to announce it and how. All right, so now that I got that outer layer, I'm gonna take Salty Kiss. Y'all, I don't know why nobody buys this color because it's a good guy. I'm gonna take my little dipper DIY brush. I am fully stocked on all of my brushes and all of my paints. I'm gonna spritz this with water. Now I'm gonna go in right where that bohemian blue starts and I'm gonna start stippling over. See right where the line of the blue is? That's where I'm starting that salty kiss, that green color. And you can see how it starts blending right away. Now you can see I'm not moving into the inner frame yet. We are gonna keep that for the brighter green. So this is our blending. I spritz it with some more water. And then again, I'm just taking that brush and I'm going where the blue and the green are gonna meet, making sure to wipe off my brush before I dip it back into that salty kiss so I'm not mixing my colors. Then I completely wiped it off on a paper towel and I got salty kiss and I'm putting it on the inside of the frame. That way it was like the bohemian blue, the blends of the two, and then the salty kiss, which gets brighter as you go in towards the frame. And y'all, this is something that I stepped out of my comfort zone. I was inspired by Debbie's design diary and her blending techniques. And then I was also inspired by somebody on Facebook. And I was like, how can I make this my own? Am I perfect with blending? No, I am not. Have I done something this bright like this before? No, I haven't. But you know what? It was a $2 picture frame. If I didn't like it, guess what? I could wash this whole thing off because my paints are water soluble. But you know what? I dig this. It is so, look at this. Let's have a moment of silence for how beautiful it is. Okay, we're back. So I wanted the option of somebody purchasing this. And maybe if that pig wasn't their thing, they can take this out and they could still use it as a picture frame. So I did not want to attach the pig to the glass part of this frame. So I'm gonna take the cardboard insert that came into it. I'm gonna take liquid sunshine and I'm gonna give this two coats. Now the second coat, I'm gonna do the stippling because I don't wanna see brush strokes in it. And I love the way this color turned out. The napkin had like these bright blues, greens, and yellows, and I wanted to tie all of that in using the frame. So after I'm done with the this cardboard, <laughs> I am going to pop everything back into the frame. So I'm gonna put the cardboard in first, the glass piece, and then the backer. This was like a super nice frame, oh my gosh. And now I was checking the outer edges. I wanted to make sure that I covered everything that would show so it didn't look messy. Then I turned it back around and now I'm gonna clean the back up. Again, DIY paints are water soluble so you could easily clean it up. I did attach the pig with um, the quick and thick tight bond. Now I'm taking the clear DIY wax and I'm going to um, coat this entire piece. This is gonna be our sealer. It's gonna dry down a bit lighter as well. And then you can use Big Top. You can do this however you want, but I hope this inspires you, you guys, to step out of your comfort zone. It does not have to be perfect. You can make mistakes. But you guys, what if, what if it did turn out fabulous? And guess what? All those mistakes you make, you learn from them. So I love this. This is one of those pieces where I am very proud of how it turned out and it inspired me to like want to do more and more. And now I'm like, oh, I want to blend a dresser. I want to blend this. So I hope you love it. Comment down below with a piggy if you enjoyed watching this process and how it came out. Again, it might not be for everybody, but that's okay because I love it. All right, so the this I got for a dollar at a garage sale. 
And I was gonna use the Seeds Catalog um, transfer. And speaking of that, the winner for the Seeds Catalog transfers is gonna be Barbara Tripp, and I'm going to post it right here. Please contact me, email unicorndustdesigns at yahoo.com. I also announced it in the community tab and I will reply to your comments. Okay, so we are going to just lay our tissue box over this transfer. Now, obviously I was vibing off of those mushrooms we did earlier. So I'm gonna lay this on top. Now, I did not seal this piece because it was it felt kind of like a plywood. I did not think I was gonna have any issues with it whatsoever. But as I start pushing this transfer down, for the most part it sticks, but it starts peeling up. You see like the white that that's going on on the wood? It starts peeling up that white. So I am like on the struggle bus. I got the ticket, you guys, to the struggle bus. Cause do you see this? I'm like trying my hardest to like get the transfer off. I'm even using like my finger and pushing it down and it, was finally releasing, but uh, this quick uh, DIY that I thought was gonna be quick took like 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clear this with my big top. And I am going to do this all the way around the box. And I didn't wanna bore you. I do the same exact thing with the transfers. I just rub it all over the box and then I clear them with the big top. And this is how it turned out. So this was a super easy flip if it would have stuck. And I did it on all four sides and I really love it. It kind of looks old and vintage and it looks so good with that planter and then my apothecary signs that I've made as well. So definitely something different and it was such an easy way of updating this Kleenex box. All right, you guys, this last one, oh man. Okay, here we go, trying milk paint again. So um, Sweet Pickens came out with a crackle medium. Y'all know I like crackle medium versus Elmer's glue. It's just my jam. I'm gonna take this bird from Walmart and I am trying to do single swipes of my brush, just like I would with my folk art crackle medium, okay? And I am trying to go, I guess you could say in one direction. Like I'm trying to go around the bird versus doing like an up and down side to side motion. I just thought it would make the crackle look better. Now this is my first time using the Sweet Pickens Crackle Medium. So it said to apply on a clean surface. It said you had to wait two hours to allow it to dry. And um, I didn't use my heat gun like I usually would because I just wasn't sure how it would react. So after two hours, no, I waited more than two hours. It was probably like four hours of this drying, okay? Now, once this is drying, we are gonna go over and we're gonna take our milk paint and curry. Ah, you guys, this stuff. I took equal parts as per the package. I got warm water as per as Brie says to do, I mixed it up, mixed it up. I let it sit for probably like 30 minutes or something. It ended up adding more powder. I still could not get this stuff to thicken up for me. I, I just cannot get milk paint. All I wanna do is add some crackle. Okay, now we're gonna take the bird. It seems dry, right? So I start applying the milk paint and I'm just like at this point, it's water, it's a watery mess. But the crackle, it almost seems um, tacky, you know, and it's, and I let it dry like over four hours. It's almost like I was using that milk paint and felt like the, the crackle was pulling on the brush. So I'm not sure if I did anything wrong, um, but I just kept going with it. I was like, just trust the process. I did not see any immediate crackle. So I was like, maybe this didn't work because I didn't have a base layer of paint. But started using the heat gun and you see the crackle. But at this point, you guys, I was like, this looks so disgusting. <laughs> I don't know if it was the color against the black, but it looked like the paint was melting off of the bird. I... 
I couldn't. I had to step away. So this morning, yes, this morning I went back and I was like, we're going to save it. It doesn't look that bad, but like it just doesn't look purposeful. You know, like it looks like I put a bunch of crackle medium on it and threw some paint, which I don't want it to look that way. So I'm going in with the drip drop method. So I am taking tarnished pearl. I mixed it with water and I am going to put this over our mixture. Now I'm reactivating the milk paint by doing this. So you need to be careful. So I'm just putting that brush slightly over this. Now, this is going to allow that tarnished pearl to settle into the cracks that we formed with that crackle medium. It's gonna lighten up that um, curry color and that black that was showing through. I'm gonna take the paper towel and blot. Do not wipe back because again, it reactivated that milk paint. So if I do a swiping motion, it's gonna pull that paint off with it. Now I start using my heat gun because I want to know, okay, is this enough of that watery tarnished pearl or do I need to add another coat on it to brighten up that white? And right away, this was doing it for me. This added purpose. It made it look like a bird that's been sitting outside forever and the paint now it had a couple layers of paint and it was starting to wear off like that white is starting to wear off i do take this outside and clear it with um matte spray paint by rust-oleum and i think it looks so much better you can see the details in the bird's face a lot more in person but now i think it has purpose it looks like it is meant to be a weathered bird. Like, do you get my vision here? Like the white was the top coat. And after all that time out in the rain and the weather, that is starting to strip down to the original yellow color. And you guys, I hope you <laughs> enjoyed this video. I can't wait to do more of these forgotten thrift flips because I got so many of them. And I will see you guys back on Thursday. I'm over here logging craft day, <clears throat> 200,565 million days in my craft room. And we still have not gotten through the pile of just the stuff that I have here. So you guys, you guys, it's a mess, okay? But we still have all of this to do. And that doesn't even count what's like in the garage and stuff, so. We're gonna get through this. And if you have to see a bird in every dang DIY video, that's what's gonna happen. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and make sure to check out the website. I have all my paint products listed there. I appreciate y'all so much. And please make sure to hit that subscribe button and comment down below. It's an absolutely free way you can help your girl out. I will see you guys back here on Thrifted Thursday, a live after that on both YouTube and Facebook. And then we will have, I think, a furniture flip on Saturday. Not sure. All right, you guys. Bye.